The scripture readings this morning are several, but they're not particularly long, so don't get excited. Uh, or maybe get excited, let's see. Uh, the first one is in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13 through 16. So if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today to love your Lord, your God, your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rain, so that you may gather in your grain new wine and oil. I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Be careful, or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. The next one is from Psalm 25, and it's verse 5, and it says, Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. And then the last part comes from Romans in uh New Testament in chapter 14, and I've chosen verses 13 to 16. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind to put away any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am fully convinced that no food is unclean by itself. And if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. If your brother is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, by your eating, destroy your brother for whom Christ died. Do not allow what you consider good to be spoken of as evil. For it is the kingdom of God is a, not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, of peace, of joy, and in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. Here ends the scripture readings for the morning. May God bless them to our hearts and our minds and understanding, and then that we put them to good use. Amen. Amen. Before I begin the uh, so-called message of the day, I would just like to ask you to do a few things, and none of this is obligatory by any manner or means. Um, at some point, if you could jot down a couple of uh, your favorite Christmas memories and time or place, whatever you've enjoyed, or and they don't have to be long, and you don't have to sign anything. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, when I come back next time, where if we have anything, you just put them in the collection plate or hand them to me on a piece of scrap paper. Um, I'd like to know if there's anything special that we also need, a phone or a visit, and I'll see that that can be worked out for anybody that you know. Uh, I don't care the hour of the day or the night that I get the calls, and uh, some of them, you know, it's the nature of what our business is in doing God's work, and you've all gotten calls from different people, I'm sure, over the period of time of how to help somebody or someone's looking for something. And if there are any special dates or times that concern you about church life that I should be aware of, I'd like to hear that also, okay? It's just uh, playing around so I can get a few more suggestions or ideas and see what we can do about a Sunday message. Today's message is entitled to be a pilgrim. And of course, you know where that came from. We have Thanksgiving coming soon. And basically, we are all pilgrims. But I thought it was um, somewhat of my obligation to give you a short history 
lesson in American history. And it's the history that teaches us that the Pilgrims uh, established Plymouth Colony in 1620, and the Puritans established the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1630. But who were these Pilgrims and Puritans? It's hard to imagine that the lives of people who thought that crossing an unknown ocean in a tiny boat to an unknown land would be better than staying where they were. But that was their choice and that's what they did. And those who survived the voyage and all the problems that they encountered um, flourished enough in their new homeland, as it were, to start a new kind of a country. Both the Pilgrims and the Puritans were dissenters from the Church of England. The Pilgrims separated themselves completely from the Church of England, while the Puritans believed in reform from within. The Mayflower Compact was signed in uh, 1620, and it was an agreement by adult freemen to create a civil body politic to frame just and equal laws. On the other hand, the Puritans established trial by jury, protection of life and property, due process of law, and freedoms from self-incrimination. Uh, these were among the very first seeds of democracy for this new world. And remember all the important things from your early school days, or maybe you don't remember them, uh, but it might jog our memories a little bit and help us to be thankful for the concepts that help us to enjoy today. We would not be here, either you in the pews or me up here or the people out there, if these concepts weren't followed through with and made into laws and things. It doesn't mean it's perfect, but it's the best that's going and we better protect it. Does anyone here trace their family back, their family tree back to the Pilgrims? Anybody? Oh, we have one family in my church in Maywood and they go back to the Pilgrims. And um, if any of you know Bobby Kucha, it was on her father's side of the family. And uh, that's enough of the local history. I'm gonna throw another bit of history in here because it concerns us also. And uh, it was back in 1777 that the Liberty Bell that's in Philadelphia was cast from melted cannon metal from the Revolutionary War. Uh, a lot of churches had a lot of bell towers and the war came and they took the bells and they uh, melted them down and molded and made cannons and went to war with those cannons. And when the war was over, apparently they took the cannons and melted them again and put them back in bells uh, shape. And um, if you've ever been to Maywood, we have a big bell on the front lawn that resembles the Liberty Bell, but it does not have the inscription on it that's from Le Leviticus that's on the one in uh, Philadelphia. And that's very important to all of us. And it says, proclaim liberty throughout the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. The bell that we have in Maywood was a gift when our church in Hackensack back in the early 20s decided to join with us and they brought some stained glass windows and they brought the bell and they brought the people too. So that was helpful and all those good things. Uh, but our connections with uh, and to the past are forever present. We can find a way to connect all the way around. We hear of varying, uh, various pilgrimages that are made to different religious sites throughout the world. And those who attend this type of, are part of this type of an activity are indeed pilgrims in the modern sense of the word. Uh, years ago, we had a minister in Maywood, uh, Jim Fenley, and uh, he was a pastor of, uh, or a doctorate at uh, Long Island. It was big, I, I, I don't remember the name of the university, but it was in the Long Island. And he was professor of philosophy and religious studies and a few other things. And he came to Maywood. Uh, and it was quite an experience for all of us. But on one occasion, he led a pilgrimage to the Holy Land and a group of us went with him. 
And uh, the religious area, of course, of the Holy Land is of great importance to so many uh, faiths, including Christianity and the Hebrew faith itself. Uh, people gathered at these different sites and they worshiped and uh, uh, was it just something to see. I was standing in front of the whaling wall and the object that and they told you specifically that you went to stand, if you had a message, you could put it in the little cracks in between the stones and you would leave the message there and God would know about it. But when you were done with that, you were asked to, in essence, back up before you turn. They didn't want you to just turn your back on the wall and walk away. So having done all these things, I backed up what I considered to be a respectable distance. And this woman came chasing at me with an arm raised and something in her hand. And I had a shoulder bag and a camera that had a long shoulder strap. And I can remember making sure they were on my shoulders. And I put my arms like, out like this so people would know that I didn't have anything. And she, I kept walking and walking. I looked, I could not see one familiar soul that I knew from my tour, including the tour leader. I don't know where they were. And then all of a sudden, this woman got annoyed, I guess, because she wasn't getting any response from me or anybody else. And she turned around and went chasing after somebody else. Uh, by that time, people were after her and apparently got her some kind of help. But it was a, a strange experience. But that having been said, we'll do a little bit of a fast forward to Thanksgiving, which this year is on the 25th of November, of course. And you might remember special dinners or occasions and things that you've done. And this is important that you keep these memories and you share them with your family and with your friends. As each day uh, comes around, we have to remember that every day that we have is a gift from God. And what we do with that gift is our gift to him. And somebody told me once, they said, yeah, that's why they call it the present. God gives you the present. That's a new day. You give him a present. That's what you do with it. So be present in the present and uh, see where we go because we can get good things out of things like that. Our pilgrimage is summed up in a hymn and I couldn't find it in the red hymnal at all. And it's called, He Would Be Valiant. He Who Would Be Valiant. And it says in part that we must be against disaster and we must follow the master and we must not be discouraged. So we'll add to that. We shouldn't say surround ourselves with a bunch of naysayers. You know, these people who are complaining continually, whether it has nothing to do with pandemic, they've been complaining since day one. Nothing's ever right, none of the sun's too bright, the sun's not bright enough, the rain's too much, it's not, not enough, you know, you've fed them and everything. They have a, a tendency to try and discourage us so we can get to be as bad as they are or as depressed as they are. So I would like uh, to think of, uh, we should be thinking of all the people who are truly alone, who have no family, who might be isolated for, for, from friends for whatever reason today, and try and get in touch with them. Uh, they are fighting these big giants of depression and loneliness and isolation by themselves. We as pilgrims could encourage them to keep the faith and to fight the good fight and to share with them. You went to church, you had a good experience or Mrs. Jones had on a hat that was funny or whatever, you know, might brighten their day a little bit. Uh, this is what it's all about. And when we start doing those things, then it's with hope and love, as well as the joy and faith, we will become better pilgrims. And that's the name of the game. Um, our belief in God as our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit grants us eternal life. And everything that we do and say should be to his glory. And we'll fear not what others say as long, and this is from the hymn, as long as we labor 
night and day to be a pilgrim. So there it is, a plan not only for Thanksgiving, but also for giving thanks. And to God be the glory forever. Amen.